Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, digital infrastructure, and the networks within. And we are coming to you live from beautiful Times Square, New York City. And I am here with the stars of Hamilton. Is that right? No, 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 no. This Lin Manuel? Is... I could be Lin Manuel. <laughs> I'll bet you could. We, I'm here with uh, some friends, some old friends, in case that's not obvious, uh, Phil and Nabil from NYI and the Nomad Futurists, which is exactly what we're going to talk about. Phil, tell us about Nomad Futurists. I'm just trying to remember the last time we were on JSA TV together, and I feel like I had slightly more hair. I think, I think I did too, to be honest with you. But Nabil has plenty for both of us. He does, he does. Yeah. So what we lost, he found. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Well Congratulations. done, Nabil. So Nabil and I uh, co-founded the Nomad Futurist Foundation. We started a podcast together as well uh, in 2020. And the goal was to kind of introduce our industry to the younger generation, to try uh -huh. to make it so a lot of the fuddy-duddies that have been coming to this conference, like, like, you, plenty. And I, like <laughs> yeah. you and I for the last 20-some-odd years, um, can retire one day. So that's, uh, that's our goal. And the, the uh, experience here, we actually have like over 100 students that we, we brought with us today uh, in our partnership with, uh, with DCD so they can get exposure to our industry. Fantastic. So that's, uh, that's, that's what we've been doing. Nabil. Yeah, it's been absolutely a phenomenal experience. So our charter really is to create awareness mm -hmm. and opportunities for the next generation mm -hmm. and share the knowledge that we've gathered over the last four to five decades of computing and data center segment to the next generation and let them be our change agents and our spokesperson to go out and start making those changes that we have struggled with a lot of bureaucracy politics and you know being that best kept secret it's time that we come out of that shell and share those journeys the trials tribulation and how do we make this place much better i love it younger generations kind of get a bad rap don't they uh and and i i i own a couple well me me and their mom uh, I wouldn't say on is the right word. Right. Yeah, if they're watching, <laughs> right. sorry. Anyway, um, I have created a couple. Right. There and, you anywho, go. Uh, and and they're brilliant, and they, and they they intuitively know things that I don't know. Tell me, are you guys seeing that kind of insight, intuition from the younger generations, and how is that ultimately going to impact this industry? I, I think no doubt. Like one of the things that we constantly say, and we're speaking to a lot of you know high schools and and mm -hmm. and K through 12 uh, 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 groups, and they all are pathologically. My kids are seven and 11 years old, mm -hmm. pathologically addicted to technology. It's crazy. Understand how every app works before we know how it works, yeah. but have no concept of why it all works. Yeah. So when the internet infrastructure goes down, they turn into Neanderthals and they start <laughs> banging the iPad. Um, which is not just kids, it's some adults um, as well. <laughs> I think no it. matter where we are in our careers, yeah. we are the IT person in our respective households. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that comes from not having a curriculum that's focused on how the internet works. Uh, that's what we're trying to do, yeah. is try to create a curriculum that can be integrated into existing STEAM programs to, to get them to understand the underlying foundational infrastructure that powers our increasingly digital world. Does that sound rehearsed? <laughs> wow, that sounds like a boilerplate. Just, I'm absolutely kidding. Nabil, um, you, you, you agree, I, I, I totally concur. I think the advantage that the young generation have is that they have been exposed to it at a very young age, so really digital mm -hmm. natives. Mm -hmm. So though they don't know what's happening on the back end or how apps operate or what the core infrastructure is, they have the aptitude and the desire to learn. Mm -hmm. So exposing them to the sector is going to pay dividends and, and, and giving them a platform that they can leapfrog from, you know, that's going to help them with their future. Yeah, you know, when my when I talk to my, my kids, which is <laughs> seldom. Yeah. Uh, when Especially I, when, when you're referring to them as owned. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you. Damn it. Um, when I, when I am uh, discussing technology with my kids, and again, they just kind of intuitively know what I'm talking about. Right. Um, they're unafraid of it. Unlike some generations, when we talk about AI, they're like, ah, I'm, I'm afraid of this. I, it's because they don't understand it. Right. They don't understand um, the, the long-term benefits of this. And, I, and I, I was explaining my daughter the other day, uh, who is a sophomore in college. I said, you know, AI is ultimately going to be the technology that will help save the old man's life when he's on the operating room table one day sure. because he's had a, a, you know, a stress-related heart attack. And she's like, well, how do you mean? And I'm like, because it is that engine that will ultimately provide the data, the real-time data and information that that surgeon needs to say, this is the problem with your dad, and I'm going to fix it right now. Yeah, and even before you get to that point, right, we're all, we're, I have an Aura Ring, I have an Apple Watch. I mean, we are collecting data constantly yeah. through all of these wearables where, you know, the hope is that before you get to that operating table, 
you can get all sorts of signs that yes. uh, and and AI is going to help process all of that data. Sorry, yeah. I? Well, I mean, yeah, that's kind of like a story that we have lived. As a matter of fact, right. together out here in Montclair, New Jersey, this will be about three years this June. Uh, three years yeah, this June, and uh, this basically sort of saved uh, my life. Uh, Nabil had a heart attack on a tennis court in Montclair, New Jersey, which was the nexus of um, the foundation started because we wanted to make a difference. Um, I, I, for real? Yeah, for real. Yes. That is a fantastic story, right, guys. So if you look at it, both of us got the same ultra watches and the aura ring. I've got one, too. Yeah. This is, and you're dressed like Steve Jobs. It's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. This is turning into, I think this should be sponsored by Apple. Jamie, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah. Apple. Apple should be a uh, sponsor. Gentlemen, I, it's been a pleasure. This has been uh, the most fun I've had on the, on the show floor today. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have because we actually have uh, some other folks lined up. But, Phil, always great to see you. Nabil, it is wonderful to, to see you. Uh, have a great rest of the show. And let's do this again sometime. And if yeah? you want to hear the rest of that story, Nomad Futurist Podcast. Uh, Nomad check it out. Futurist Podcast. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. All right, you bet. We'll see you, viewers. Uh, keep networking, and thank you for watching JSA TV.